the, the talk is advertised in the program as the meaning of the ecological reserve. Uh, that, that, I think, is a fairly typical thing that happens with, with volunteering to, to speak at a, at a conference where someone asks you for an abstract when you're working with something else. You think, okay, that's a good idea. Um, a month later, it perhaps isn't such a good idea anymore. So I'm just talking about the ecological reserve. I'll probably touch on the meaning. I'm focusing a, a fair amount on the implementation of the ecological reserve. And then taking it a bit further to look at what the purpose of the ecological reserve is, which is obviously to conserve uh, aquatic, I think particularly freshwater ecosystems uh, in the context of the National Water Act. So the, uh, the structure of the presentation then, I've hit the wrong button, clearly. Um, which one do I use to make it go forward? That, okay. Nope. It's, uh, what I'm seeing here is different from what you're seeing there. Sorry. So I just press the down button. Okay. Right, so briefly to, to introduce the problem, and uh, here you'll see that some of the, the information that I provide is exactly the same information that, that Doug was presenting earlier on. To set out the legal aspects, some of you might be more familiar with those legal aspects than others. To look at how the ecological reserve is dealt with in the recent draft National Water Resource Strategy, and that looks pretty much at the way it's being implemented at the moment. Um, what I've called an interesting case study, the, the case study generally um, is quite interesting. To call it a case study in the context of what I'm talking about here is probably a bit of an elaborate description. Um, so we'll, we'll go through that relatively briefly, but there's an interesting aspect to that case study in respect of the ecological reserve. And then just to ask where are we going in respect of aquatic ecosystems in terms of current um, water policy and strategy. So as uh, Doug was saying earlier, we have a serious problem in respect of, of freshwater aquatic ecosystems in South Africa at the moment. These are figures that are taken from the National Water Resource Strategy. It refers to these as coming from the uh, National Biodiversity Assessment of 2010. I'm not sure whether that should refer to 2011, but whatever. Uh, these are sandby sourced figures, and 60% uh, of our river ecosystem types are threatened. 25% of those, so presumably that means 15%, are critically endangered. 65% wetland ecosystem types are threatened, 48% critically endangered. And only, this is, this is a, the other side of the coin as it were, less than 15% of river ecosystems are moderately to well represented within protected areas. So the vast majority of these ecosystems are outside of protected areas uh, and clearly need, need management and conservation efforts accordingly. As far as the legal aspects are concerned relating to the reserve and, and specifically to the ecological aspect of the reserve, what, what's referred to as the ecological reserve, this is the definition of the reserve in the National Water Act. And it relates to the quantity and the quality of the water that's required firstly to satisfy basic human needs and then the main focus of today to protect aquatic ecosystems in order to secure ecologically sustainable development and use of the relevant water resource defined in Section 1 of the National Water Act. The reserve determination forms part of quite an elaborate classification system in terms of the National Water Act. Firstly, Section 12 requires the classifying of water resources, and this includes procedures for determining the reserve in, in respect of particular, firstly, water management areas, and secondly, in respect of particular catchments. That's followed then by the determination of the class of water resources and the resource quality objectives in respect of those catchments. And then as far as the reserve itself is concerned, Section 16 sets out the way in which the reserve is determined, Section 17 provides for preliminary determinations of the reserve, and then Section 18 refers to the way in which the reserve is given effect to, and I'll just read that for you, if I can find it. 
the Minister, the Director General, an organ of state and a water management institution must give effect to the reserve as determined in terms of this part when exercising any power or performing any duty in terms of this act. Now, what is happening at the moment is that Section 16, which is aimed at the determination of the reserve, is clearly a process that takes some time uh, because, by and large, the reserve hasn't been yet definitively determined. And I'll show you some maps shortly which indicate the status of that process throughout the country. That's a process that requires several steps, uh, including the preliminary steps in this entire classification system. But while that is going on, the reserve has to be determined in respect of particular uh, issues, for example, license applications. And in that respect, it's determined on a preliminary basis. So you've got the six, Section 16 process that is ongoing, and yet at the same time, the authorities are having to decide on what the reserve is in respect of, of particular catchments when it comes, for example, to particular license applications in respect of those catchments. The process that I was talking about in respect of the earlier slide, section 12, 13, and so on, uh, is all set out in this particular government regulation, which is a fairly short set of regulations, but when one looks at the kind of detail that's provided in there, you can see why this process takes such a long time. Now, one of the questions that immediately arises is the Act was a 1998 Act. Um, it's rather puzzling that it took 12 years to decide how exactly to implement uh, Section 12, 13, etc. But that's, that's where we are at the moment. So if one looks at that particular set of regulations, you can see why perhaps it has taken so long to, to determine the reserve, certainly in a, in a definitive way. As I said, it has been determined a, on a preliminary basis quite frequently uh, in order to uh, address issues of licensing and so on. In the National Water Resource Strategy, the draft strategy, which was released just over a month ago, the, the, the basic point is the one that's expressed in that first paragraph, and that is that the ecological component of the reserve uh, is not yet fully implemented in most water management areas. That's probably somewhat of, a, of an understatement. Um, as far as key strategic actions are concerned, just highlighting the one that, that refers to the ecological reserve, uh, the idea is that determination of these ecological reserves must be accelerated by the Department of Water Affairs, uh, that the, a program must be adopted in order to look at the status of implementation, this needs to be monitored, and so on. Now, if one looks at the way in which the ecological reserve is dealt with in particular catchments, this is certainly not a list of all of the catchments in the country, but these are the ones that are referred to in the strategy where there's specific reference to the reserve. And you'll see here that other than, than a handful uh, of catchments where it seems that the ecological reserve is being met, uh, in one case it's, it's, it's being oversupplied, and that's because of the large amount of water that's coming from the Sutu. Um, in most cases, there's a problem. Uh, and it looks like that this problem, in some cases, is not a problem that, that will be alleviated in the future. So, for example, in respect to the Limpopo catchment, the water resource strategy says a true ecological reserve uh, can now never be achieved. So I assume that means that they're aiming at a false one. If you can see the map, uh, this, is, this indicates the surface water reserve deter determination in 2010. Uh, the green areas are the ones where there's been a comprehensive reserve determination. Uh, the, the purple, um, less comprehensive. The blue, even less. And then the brown, even less than that. And it still leaves a huge amount of light yellow where there's been absolutely nothing done seemingly at all. That's the surface water. Similarly, the situation with groundwater. Again, the green is the one where there has been a comprehensive determination, um, but you can see there for most of the country it, it hasn't been done. This is the, the case study that I was talking about. As I said, it, it's rather elaborate to call it a case study, certainly for present purposes. If one looks at the entire um, process, it, it's quite an interesting process. This involved a compulsory license allocation process. 
Now, in terms of the National Water Act, the authorities can decide that in respect of a particular catchment, that the users of water in that catchment are required to apply for licenses. Uh, and this would apply primarily to people who have existing lawful uses who otherwise are not required to apply for licenses, uh, but it would, would accommodate potentially new users as well. And this would be used primarily in cases where there's water stress, essentially a point being, the point being that the demand for water in that particular catchment exceeds the supply. This was certainly the case in the Tosca Malopo area, and if you don't know where that is, I'll show you a map uh, shortly. It's a, the archetype one-horse town. Um, and what is particularly interesting about this particular case study is that the water in question is all groundwater. This is one of three licen uh, compulsory licensing application processes that um, are happening more or less at the same time. This is the first one to have been finalized. I think there are particular reasons for that that we don't have to go into here. The other two, one of them is in the Western Cape. The third is in the Umpletuze uh, catchment in, in northern KZN. But uh, what is different in this particular case study to the others is that the water that we're dealing with uh, is all underground. This is the area that, that we're dealing with. Um, it's in the, the Val water management area, or what is currently the Val water management area, because the department is changing from 19 water management areas to nine, on the border of Botswana, very dry, kind of bushveld uh, area. The cities or towns, I suppose, that you would recognize in that area, you might recognize Freiburg, even though many of you probably have never been anywhere near there. You might have read the name somewhere. The area that we're concerned with is more or less the circle um, the quaternary areas E, F, D, and C, if you can see those numbers up there. Oh. Um, those, those areas. Um, this is another map uh, indicating the aquifer that uh, supplying the water in that particular area. And this is the kind of center of the, the, um, the case study Tosca, which, as I said, is a that's the only picture that I could find. What's well, one of two pictures that I could find on the internet. One's the bottle store. The other picture I found was the church. But I'll show you the <laughs> bottle store. Every, every South African town needs one of each of those. Now, this is the, the case study, really, for present purposes. Something that, uh, in, in part of the documentation that I, I was fortunate enough to, re to receive from the department, without having put in an application through the Promotion of Access to Information Act. This was volunteered to me. Um, one of the documents upon which the decision, decisions were made in respect of the compulsory licensing allocation process. In order to, to reach that outcome, one of the things they had to do was determine what the reserve was uh, in respect of this particular catchment. Um, not dealing with the basic human needs reserve here, but what I found quite fascinating was that they said there's no reserve that's required here for aquatic ecosystems because it's just groundwater, and this groundwater does not contribute to surface water flow through, through base flow. So basically there's no interface between the groundwater in the Tosca Malopo area and what's happening on the surface. Now, as a... As a lawyer, and perhaps I shouldn't say that too loudly in this company, but um, I wondered whether that was a kind of appropriate scientific approach. And uh, when I discussed it with one of my colleagues at university, who's not a lawyer, but he, who works in hydrology, he was also quite interested to see this. And uh, he pointed me in a direction of a few other sources. And it seems that this is standard practice in the Department of Water Affairs, that Groundwater is generally interpreted as falling outside the definition of aquatic ecosystems except where that groundwater discharges and sustains surface water bodies. So seemingly, the studies that were carried out in respect of the aquifer in the Tosca Malopo area indicated that this groundwater did not discharge to the surface. Uh, just another quote from, from the same manual which seems to guide the way in which these decisions are made. Where a direct link exists between groundwater and aquatic or terrestrial ecosystems, 
protection mechanisms need to be put in place to ensure that groundwater abstraction does not negatively impact on ecosystems that are dependent on the groundwater. Okay, and part of those protection mechanisms would be the determination of the ecological reserve. Okay, so that was the case study. Um, where do we go in respect of aquatic ecosystems? Now, one of the, the aspects of the National Water Resource Strategy that uh, is very interesting is the identification of what the authors of that strategy called freshwater ecosystem priority areas, uh, or as they refer to by the acronym FEPAS. And uh, in, the, in the strategy, these green dots uh, are the so-called freshwater ecosystem priority areas. There are a whole lot of um, interventions that are suggested in respect of, of protecting these areas. One of the, the aspects that, that I found particularly interesting was the idea that these be formally protected. Now, the strategy doesn't go into any further detail as to how that protection is to take place. I mean, it's presumably declaring them as some other kind of protected area. Whether it requires the uh, promulgation of a new kind of protected area, the uh, freshwater ecosystem priority area, or whether one uses one of the existing protected areas in order to conserve those areas uh, is, is obviously something that, that we'll have to find out in time. Now, what I also found quite interesting about this map um, is, is clearly that there, there are certain problems that will arise in respect of declaration of these areas, particularly if one follows the idea that a protected area is an area in which certain activities should not take place. Um, now, unfortunately, I don't have the technical expertise or didn't have it um, when I concluded this PowerPoint presentation last night to superimpose maps on top of each other. Um, but these are, are some other maps that I, I picked up. These are from the CSIR indicating the high water yield areas. Now, there's a significant overlap between the high water yield areas and the FIPAs in the National Water Resource Strategy, the high groundwater recharge areas. Um, but then if one looks at, at the, um, at the FIPAs in conjunction with this map, now this is just a part of Mpumalanga, it's not the whole country, but you'll see there this, this map, again it's sourced from the CSIR, indicates the correspondence between areas of high water yield and those areas that are referred to in the, in the key there as mining related. These are areas that are under prospecting or, or mining uh, focus, if you want to call it that. And you'll see, I think, uh, as, as Doug was pointing out earlier, often there are high mineral re uh, resources underneath wetlands. There's significant correlation there between the mining areas and, water, and areas of high water yield. And if one looks at them together, um, this map on the, on the right would fit in this, this chunk here um, is Swaziland. So that's the area that we're talking about there. Now, there clearly uh, a number of freshwater ecosystem priority areas in, in that particular part of the country that are all within the, uh, the spectacles, if you want to call it that, of, of the miners. And somehow that uh, contradiction is going to have to be addressed. One minute, Mark. Um, for one final thought. At the moment, the FIPAs are referred to in the National Water Resource Strategy. The Act says the authorities must give effect to the National Water Resource Strategy when exercising any power or performing any duty in terms of this Act. Can anyone see what the problem is with that particular provision? Does the Minister of Minerals decide to grant mineral rights in terms of this Act? That's the problem. The National Water Resource Strategy should apply not only in respect of decisions made under the National Water Act, uh, but under all legislation. So I'll leave you with that thought. Uh, thank you very much.